The topic in this video is exponential and logarithmic functions. Uh, exponential and logarithmic functions are like twins. Uh, but uh, the video will be too long if they are combined in one video. So uh, the exponential functions will be discussed in this part one and uh, the log logarithmic functions will be discussed in part two. Now let's uh, start with uh, the next slide. Let's start our discussion about exponential function. Uh, if y is a function of t here and uh, y a function of x here, the place of t here is at the exponent. The place of t is as the power here. So uh, it is different from polynomial function. If it is a polynomial function, the place of t will be at the place of p here. But it is not a polynomial function. It is an exponential function. The place of t is as the power. The place of x here is as the power, as the exponent. That is why it is called exponential function. Uh, the same thing as here, y a function of t and the t here as the power. And we can see the typical uh, shape of uh, exponential curve here. Uh, it is always increasing and the slope also increases. We can see here the steepness is getting uh, higher, Okay, it is getting steeper if we move from left to the right and uh, the horizontal uh, axis here serves as the asymptote so the graph here will always uh, approach the horizontal uh, axis but it will never touch the horizontal axis so uh, that is why the horizontal axis in this example serves as the asymptote and uh, another thing that we can see from this uh, curve here is that the vertical intercept is 1. And then if, for example, the base here, the 2 here is called the base, here 2 is the base, B is the base, B here is also the base. If the base here is increased in this example to 3, so the initially the uh, base is 2 and then it is increased to 3. See what is happening with the curve. Uh, the curve is like getting compressed. So it is closer to the vertical axis. It is closer to the horizontal axis. So it is compressed. And uh, another thing that we can also see here is that uh, the vertical intercept remains 1. The vertical intercept does not change. Why? Because uh, at the vertical intercept here, the t is 0. And uh, any number which is raised to 0 will always be 1. So uh, the vertical intercept is 1 here, even though the base is increased or decreased. And uh, let's talk about the base again. The base is greater than 0 because, for example, if the base is less than 0, as we can see in this uh, equation, y equals uh, negative 4 uh, to the power of 1 half, the curve or the value of y when the t or when the x here is 1 half uh, will not be defined. That is why the base uh, should be greater than 0. When the base is equal to 1, uh, as in this example, y equals 1 uh, to the power of t, uh, it will be just like a constant function, because 1 uh, raised by any number will be equal to 1. And then, uh, when the base is between 0 and 1, for example, if it is y equals uh, 1 fifth to the power of t, it will be simpler if we write it as y equals uh, 5 to the power of negative t. 
in a more general form, the exponential function can be uh, written as y equals a b uh, to the power of c times t. The p here is the base, for example, 2 here. And the c here is like the coefficient of t. So uh, the coefficient here, the c here, is multiplied by t. And then a here is uh, 1 in this example. Okay, so uh, 1 is the a, 2 here is the b, and then in this example, uh, the t is multiplied by 1. So the c here is 1. The c here is 1. Okay, and then uh, when the a here, the a is increased, so we have a larger a, the curve will be uh, shifted, uh, shifted up here. So uh, this is the uh, original curve. When the a is increased from 1 to 2 in this example, uh, the new curve will be higher than the original one. So it is like shifted up here. Yeah. And uh, of course, when we have a smaller a, so when the a is smaller, the curve will be shifted down. But uh, remember, even if it is uh, shifted down, uh, the horizontal uh, axis will still uh, serve as the horizontal asymptote. Okay, and then let's see another uh, example here. Uh, this is the uh, y equals 2 to the power of 1 times t. So the c here is 1. The c here is 1. And then what will happen to the curve when the c is increased to 2? This is the new function, the new curve. Yeah. So when the c is increased, the curve is like compressed to the uh, vertical axis. But the vertical intercept remains 1 here. Okay. And then, uh, of course, when we have a smaller c, when the c is, uh, is uh, smaller, the curve will be uh, expanding. So, for example, it will be uh, like here. So it will expand. Okay, but uh, the vertical intercept will not uh, be changed. Uh, the vertical intercept, uh, because the original vertical intercept is one, so uh, the vertical intercept in the new function will also be one. And next, uh, when the base is e, e is a natural number. This is the natural number. The symbol is e. When the base is e, the function is called natural exponential function. What is e? Uh, this is the explanation. When we have a function of m, and it is equal to 1 plus 1 over m to the power of m, and then when m is increased to infinity, the result, of course, we need the help of limit to find the result. The result when m approaches infinity is the natural number. So this is uh, the explanation for the natural number. And then, uh, for example, when we have here y equals e to the power of t here, it is an example of a natural exponential function. One special profit, uh, pro property of uh, natural exponential function is that the derivative with respect to t of an exponential function is the function itself. So here we have uh, y equals e to the power of t. The derivative with respect to t is e to the power of t, so the function itself. For example, when it is applied to y equals a e to the power of w, and at the same time w is a function of uh, t, 
W is equal to RT. So the derivative of Y with respect to T, of course, we need to apply the chain rule. First, the derivative of Y with respect to W, and then uh, times the uh, derivative of W with respect to T. The derivative of Y with respect to W is the function here itself. So it is a e to the power of w times the derivative of w with respect to t. The derivative of w with respect to t is r. So the result is r a e to the power of r t. In a shortcut, we can also find the result here just by moving or copying the r here to the front. So uh, when the initial uh, the, or the original function is a e to the power of r t, the derivative with respect to t is r. So r is copied from here. It is taken from here. r a e to the power of r t. That's uh, the special uh, property of a uh, natural exponential function. So the derivative is the function itself. Now uh, we will apply the exponential function to uh, an example. This example is about investment. Uh, we have uh, information here that one dollar is invested in a bank for two years with 10% per annum uh, interest. If this 10% uh, per annum interest is compounded or calculated uh, annually, so the future value, the future value of this money when it is invested uh, in a bank for two years is, uh, it is explained here, so uh, the number of periods that we will find here is two, two is because uh, we have two years here and it is multiplied by one because it is compounded annually. So uh, there will be only one calculation of interest in one year. So one times two. So the initial money, one dollar, the present value is one dollar. Uh, after one year, the value will be uh, one dollar times uh, one plus 10 percent because 10 percent is the interest in a year. Okay, and then in the second year, the value of the money after the first year will be uh, multiplied again by one uh, plus uh, ten percent. So after two years, the value of the money will be one dollar times here one plus ten percent times one plus ten percent. So it is one plus ten percent to the power of Two, the two here is actually coming from here. Uh, two years times the number of uh, time uh, the interest is compounded in a period in a year. Okay, so it is one times two, which is two. So the result is one point two one dollar. And then. When it is uh, compounded semi-annually, so in a year there will be uh, two times uh, the interest will be uh, calculated. Uh, that, is, that is why it is called uh, semi-annually. Uh, the number of uh, times the interest is uh, calculated is two times two. Two years is coming from the two years. And the two here is uh, because uh, it is uh, compounded semi-annually. Uh, there will be two times uh, the interest will be calculated in a year. So uh, the future value of the money after two years will be one dollar times one plus now because uh, the interest is calculated semi-annually, so the interest is uh, divided by two. Okay, because 10% uh, is the interest for one year. 
And what we need to find is the interest uh, not for one year, but only for uh, one semester or six months, because the interest is calculated twice in a year. Uh, so it is 10% divided by two. This is for the first uh, period, for, for the first uh, six months. Okay, for the first six months. And then the next six months will be the value after six months times one plus 10% divided by two. Again, uh, in the first six months of the second year, should be calculated again uh, by 1 plus 10 percent divided by 2. And then at the end of the two years uh, period, it would be calculated again by 1 plus 10 percent divided by 2. So we have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 here. 4 is coming from 2 times 2. 2 is from the number of years. Uh, and uh, two here because it is uh, compounded uh, semi-annually. So in general, uh, we can simplify this uh, formula becoming uh, one dollar times one plus ten percent divided by two to the power of one, two, three, four. Two times two is four. The two times two here is uh, the same as here. So. Uh, the result is uh, 1.2155 dollars. Uh, and then uh, if it is uh, compounded quarterly, so there will be four times of uh, calculations of interest in, in a year. Uh, then it is multiplied by two because it is two years. So we're going to have here eight uh, times totally uh, of interest calculation. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, in general, it is $1 times 1 plus 10% divided by 4 because it is uh, compounded quarterly. So, for in one quarter, the interest is 10% divided by 4. 1 plus 10% divided by 4 to the power of 8. 8 here, 4 times 2 is uh, the same as here. So, the result is uh, 1.284 dollars and then in general if the interest is compounded m times in a year okay if it is compounded m times in a year uh, the future value the general uh, formula for the future value uh, after t years or after t period will be uh, the principal or the present value which is uh, one dollar in this example, times one plus uh, i, i this is the interest a, in a period, in a year in this example, divided by m, uh, m is uh, how many times uh, the interest uh, is calculated in a period, in a year, to the power of m times t, t is again uh, the number of years or the number of period uh, we are talking about in the example. So this is the general formula to find future value when uh, money uh, is invested uh, for T period uh, and the interest is I here in one period. And uh, the number of times uh, interest is compounded in a period or in a year is M. From the previous slide, we know that the uh, uh, general formula to find the future value is uh, here. P times 1 plus I over M to the power of MT. And this expression can also be written as this one. So this expression is the same as this one. See here, the m of a 1 here to the power of, sorry, m of a i here uh, to the power of uh, i t. So we can cancel the i here. When the i here is cancelled, okay, the i here is cancelled, the i is cancelled. So we're going to have 
the same formula as the original uh, general formula here. And then next, uh, when the m of i is replaced by w, so w uh, is equal to m of i, so m of i here <coughs> can be uh, replaced by w. And then because uh, w is m of i, so i of m is 1 of w. So uh, this expression is the same as this one. Only now uh, we cannot see m again here. Uh, what we can see now is w. And w is m of i. And next we can apply, we can use this uh, understanding to find the formula when the interest is compounded continuously. Uh, so the interest is not only compounded uh, uh, quarterly, it is not only compounded monthly, it is not only compounded uh, uh, every minute, every second, but it is uh, compounded every moment. So it is compounded continuously. So when it is compounded continuously, we need the help of limit. Uh, the limit when the m approaches infinity because it is compounded continuously. This is the general formula. And from this uh, note, we have already seen that uh, this, is, uh, this expression is the same as this one. So we can copy this one here. It is basically the same. But uh, what is uh, different now is that uh, in this new expression, we cannot see m. Instead, we have w. However, uh, from this uh, w equals m of i, we know that when m approaches infinity, the w will also approach infinity. So, uh, basically, uh, this expression is the same as this one. And then, from previous slide, from the previous slide, from the note in the previous slide, we know that 1 plus 1 over w uh, to the power of w is the natural number. So this 1 plus 1 over w uh, to the power of w can be replaced by e. e is for the natural number. So when the interest is compounded continuously, the future value of this uh, investment is p. p is the present value or the principal. Uh, times uh, e to the power of i t. t is the number of period and the i here is the interest uh, for one period. In this slide, we're going to discuss the present value of a uh, future value. So instead of uh, compounding, we're going to do discounting. This is the form formula from the previous slide. It is uh, for finding the future value uh, from a present value. Uh, and then this formula can be rearranged becoming P equals F over 1 plus I over M to the power of MT. So the P here is moved to the left and the F here is moved to the right. So this is the formula to find present value uh, from a future value. The M here uh, is equal to 1 when it is uh, compounded uh, annually, m is uh, 12 when it is compounded monthly, and so on. And uh, this is the formula when uh, we need to find the future value of uh, present value and the interest is uh, continuously compounded. Okay, so uh, we can also rearrange this becoming p equals f divided by e to the power of i t. So this formula is for finding present value of a future value when the interest is continuously discounted. Okay, And then, uh, of course, we can also rewrite this uh, expression as uh, f times e to the power of negative i t. So the, the e to the power of i t here is uh, moved up here. Okay, so this is the formula for finding present value uh, of a feature value 
when the m here is discretely discounted. So m uh, is, for example, uh, 2 when it is semi annually, m is uh, equal to uh, 4 when it is uh, uh, discounted uh, quarterly, and when uh, it is continuously discounted, this is the formula f divided by e to the power of i t. We have two exercises in this slide. Let's see the first one. Tony plans to start a business after graduation and he expects that he needs three more years to get his degree. When an interest of 4% per annum is compounded monthly, so it is compounded monthly, the interest is 4% per annum, what is the amount of money Tony needs to invest now? So uh, we are expected to find uh, present value because it is uh, uh, asking what is the amount of money Tony needs to invest now in a bank to get 200 million uh, rupees after graduation. So this is the money after three years. So this is the future value. So uh, we need to, what we need to apply is the formula to find present value from a future value. And the future value is 200 million, <coughs> 200 million rupees. And then it is compounded uh, monthly. So the M here is 12. The M here is 12. And uh, the number of period is three, three years here. And the interest is uh, 4%. So uh, we can find the present value. The present value is uh, 177,419,489 rupees. Okay, this is the uh, future value of. Uh, uh, sorry, this is the present value that Tony needs to invest now to get 200 million after three years. And then uh, the second example. The size of population in a city is estimated to be 25 million people. 25 million people in 1 January 2021. Recent studies estimate that the population in the city will grow 1% per year on average in the next 10 years. And the question is, what is the population in the city at the end of 2028? So it is started from uh, 1 January 2021 to uh, the end of uh, 2028. So uh, totally, uh, we're going to have uh, eight years. So the T here is eight. The number of period is uh, eight. And it grows 1% a year. So the uh, interest is 1% uh, here, 1%. Because population grows continuously, uh, normally population grows continuously, of course it, it, it is not compounded uh, annually, it is not compounded uh, monthly, but it grows continuously every moment. So we need to apply the uh, formula for uh, compounding continuously. And this is the formula, the future value of a present value. The present value, because it is started in 1 January 2021, so the present value is 25 million times the E, the natural number, to the power of 1%. 1% is the uh, interest. And uh, it is uh, the number of years or the number of periods. Okay, so. Uh, the result is uh, 27,082,177 uh, people at the end of 2028. Thank you. Uh, that's the end of this uh, part one video uh, about uh, exponential and logarithmic functions. And the uh, logarithmic functions can be found in the part two. Thank you.